In this video, we're going to use the equivalence that when I look at a element in pure shear in this orientation, it's equivalent to an element tilted at 45 degrees with both a tensile and compressive stress and no shear, except that the magnitude of the stress on this surface in shear is equivalent, as we showed previously, as the magnitude of the tensile and compressive stress on these two surfaces. And we're gonna use this relationship to prove something that I told you before, which is G, which is the shear modulus, is related to E, which is the elastic modulus and Poisson's ratio. And if you remember in our linear elastic mo model, we say that the normal stress is equal to E times the normal strain. And we said that shear stress is equal to G times the shear angle. So we're gonna use geometry and the equivalence of these two situations that we've already shown uh, to kind of prove this relationship and that there's only two parameters in our ela linear elastic model, the elastic modulus and Poisson's ratio. So to understand this problem geometrically, let's use a little Lego model here. So here's my little element of material and I'm going to shear it, right? So when I apply a shear, this thing deforms as such. So here is going to be our initial reference configuration, just a simple square. And when I shear this thing, the way we're going to think about it geometrically is this point moving outwards. So something along the lines of this. So let's, what we want to understand then is the relationship between the shear angle, which is how much these, ang th these angles collapse here, and the change in the distance between these two points. Because see, when I pull this thing out, it's clearly elongating here. So that's the tensile, and then these two are coming inwards, and so that's the compressive. So we want to relate this elongation to this change in angle. Or from our model here, the definition of the shear angle is the angle that this thing tilts over. So you can see that in this configuration, this is half the shear angle, and this is the other half meaning that this angle here between these two lines here is 90 degrees minus the shear angle. Likewise, that means that the angle here is 90 degrees plus the shear angle. Okay, so let's find the distance from point O to point A prime. So what we need to do to compute the strain of this line is to, compute, is to figure out what this distance is, how far that point has moved. So let's start by computing the distance from O to A. That's pretty easy because we just have a square here. So for simplicity, let's just assume our square, whatever unit of measure we're in, is length one. So that means that the distance, the length from, of line O to A is nothing more than the square root of two. Now, to get the length of line O to A prime, uh, we have to use a little bit of trigonometry. Probably the easiest thing to do is to use the law of cosines, if you remember that one. We can apply to any triangle, and so we'll apply it to this triangle right here. And so the law of co cosines says that the length here squared is equal to this length squared, so that's just one. This length squared, so that's just one. Minus twice this length, which is just one, this length, which is just one, times the cosine of this angle right here. So 90 degrees plus that shear angle. Now we can do a little bit of manipulation here where we've just used some trigonometric relationships to convert the cosine of 90 plus the shear to just the sine. So now I have the length of this distance here and the length of that distance there. So the strain is nothing more than the difference of those divided by the initial length. which gives us a final relationship, which is kind of a funny relationship because I've got a, a sine and a square root. 
However, we'll do the thing we always do, which is we're going to assume that the shear angle is really, really small. So even though I've drawn it quite exaggerated here, and when we looked at our rubber bar, the deformations are quite large, we're usually interested in cases where deformations are very, very small. And so assuming this is a small number really has no risk. So if you remember, sine of a small number is approximately equal to a small number. And if you remember your Taylor series, you could expand this thing out as well and make a linear approximation. And what we would find is that we would have this simple relationship here, which means that in the small angle approximation, our strain is just the shear angle divided by two. So this is the relationship we're gonna use for the rest of our derivation. So if we go back to our elemental view, an element in pure shear is equivalent to a tensile stress in the normal direction along this axis that I'll call sigma x, and a compression along this axis called sigma y. And here, all I'm doing is I'm just saying for this problem here locally, let's attach an xy coordinate system here. And so what we wanna do is ask the question, what is the strain in the x direction? Well, from Hooke's law, it would tell us that it should be the normal stress in this direction divided by the elastic modulus. However, there's another component of what is well, which is a Poisson ratio effect, right? So if there were not this Y component here, I would stretch in this direction, I would compress in this direction, but there would be no stress in the Y direction. However, if I squeeze in this direction, I also get a little bit of extra strain in that direction because I'm smushing here, so I stretch out there. So that's that Poisson ratio effect. And in our linear elastic model, well, what we can do is we linearize everything, so we just simply add. So, so this is what we'd call the strain just from this force here, but I also have the Poisson ratio effect, which is Poisson's ratio times the stress in the y direction divided by E. Now, however, remember that our equivalence in this element, if this is the shear stress that I call tau, that this is nothing more than tau, and then this is nothing more than tau when I incline this thing at 45 degrees. So what that means is I can rewrite this as the shear stress tau times this factor here, one plus Poisson's ratio divided by the elastic modulus. However, in the last slide, we found that we had a relationship for the strain in this direction as related to the shear angle in this configuration. And what we found was the strain in that direction was equal to the shear angle divided by two. And so now if I re rearrange this relationship here to get it in a maybe a more familiar looking form, I could say that the shear stress is related to the shear angle times this funny factor, which before we called this combination of parameters the shear modulus. So what we've done through here is we've shown that the shear modulus is related to the elastic modulus and Poisson ratio result that I just kind of told you before, but now we've demonstrated has to be true.